The government's own analysis shows that under a reasonable worst-case scenario, a no-deal Brexit would reduce our supply but increase the price of food, medicines, petrol, electricity and compromise our national security. But it's all just project fear, right? Because there wasn't such an initial shock after the referendum result was announced, all warnings about Brexit must just be scaremongering. Why? This isn't some campaign group trying to thwart the will of the people. This is the PM's civil servants. Boris Johnson didn't study international trade, he studied Greek poetry. The professionals he relies on to know what to expect from a no-deal Brexit are saying that it would ruin the lives of the people he has a duty to protect. During the 2016 referendum, Boris Johnson didn't even acknowledge the idea of a no-deal Brexit as an option. Why? Because he knows that every country in the WTO has a trade deal with its neighbours. He knows that people are smart enough to see that doing something that every other successful economy in the world has chosen not to do would obviously hurt us. He knows that nobody would vote for that, and yet, here we are. Don't know what you don't understand. This is a worst case scenario. It is not a prediction. Let me tell you about my morning this morning. I woke up and I had to take a couple of steps to my bathroom. I could. I could have fallen down those steps and broken my leg. I then went in the shower. There's electricity and there's water going to the shower. That could have electrocuted me. I could have shaved myself. I could have cut myself shaving. I got in a car. I could have, well, not my car, he could have crashed. We could have gone into the side of the bus. Could, could, could. This is a completely slanted and biased document. Ian Duncan Smith appeared on my radio show this morning on LBC and broke the terms of the Privy Council, which Andrew is a political veteran, he'll know all about that. He broke the terms of the Privy Council to point out that when he was shown this a month or so ago, he said to the people, because they were talking about the impact, I think it's point three, the impact in our ports, and he said, what have they said at Calais? What, what have they told you? And there was a silence. So Ian Douglas has said, you have spoken to the people in Calais, have you, about the new... They hadn't even spoken to the people of Calais. I put it to you that Yellow Hammer is absolutely twisted, absolutely biased. Of course we should be aware of the concerns, but realise what it was set up to do. Let's put it this way. You're saying that it's all just it could happen, could happen. Let's go with actual facts. Where does the majority of the fish that we catch go? Where do half of the cars that we manufacture go? Where does a third of the Welsh lamb that we, that we farm go? EU countries. Does, the, does a no-deal Brexit force the EU to put tariffs on all of those products? Yes. Do they currently face tariffs now? No. So isn't it, is it not absolutely, definitely sure that there will be barriers at those borders? No. Sorry. No. There were, there were, there no, were, there were, there were trade, bar there weren't trade barriers before. There are trade barriers we, now. We don't and you're saying what, that it will be fine. We don't know what the deal is. We don't know what. what it's Boris no Johnson deal. Might, <laughs> but we're not going out necessarily with a no deal. But this is about this no is no the deal. worst. I don't know what you don't understand. The worst <clears throat> case scenario, not a prediction. There's a difference. Do you know, Nick, at one point I would have agreed with what you're saying in the sense that I would have seen this as some very fringe outcome that all sensible people would have agreed we would avoid. It would have seemed like the extreme that I wouldn't expect to ever happen. But the difference between what I thought then and what I thought now is two years of failing to get a deal through Parliament and Boris Johnson clearly and his own cabinet ministers and his own brother have suggested that he's not seriously pursuing a deal at this point. We are in serious danger of facing a deal break. It's not, it's not some... It's because, Nikki Morgan but, resigned from cabinet because she said pursuing a deal was not being done in any way near as serious a way as the option of well, a no deal. It is something we are realistically facing. It I is think, not a fringe scenario. Rudd, because Nikki Morgan, yeah. who is a Remainer, has yeah. stayed in the cabinet and said she will continue to fight in the cabinet. She thinks a no deal should be kept as an option because it's the best negotiating tactic we've got. But I want to go back to what Fermi said in his introduction. You said, because the predictions, which I would call in Project Fear, weren't as bad, just remind you what the Chancellor, George Osborne, said during that referendum. There would be an immediate and profound economic shock if we voted to leave. Who wrote those forecasts for him? The very civil servants who've written this yeah, yeah. utterly discredited document. It is Project Fear at large. Just because it came out of the government, the Whitehall is remain dominated. We, uh, uh, the, the civil servants who were running it for Mrs May remain dominated. It was a remain dominated cabinet. Uh, and that's why I think Nick is quite right. It is worst case uh, assumptions, it is not a prediction. Again, you're basically, you're, you're saying that because these people said this, blah, 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 blah. Again, I'll go, with the, I'll go with the facts. No, no, well, well, why don't you answer the point I made about mm. a profound, a profound and immediate economic well, shock. Let me remind you what we saw in the last week. Mm. In the last week, 
the best unemployment figures in this country for 45 years, economic growth in July up 0.3%, and the highest wage growth in the economy since 2008, the year of the credit crunch. It wasn't just that the, the warnings were exaggerated, they were made up, yeah, yeah. and I think they're still oh, made up okay. in this project. Okay. So, in this for starters, wage, wage cre uh, job creation has slowed. As for what it, what it concretely 45 year in, 45 year best and, figures. And, and, we are, and we are still in the EU. The point is, I'm going to give you, give you a concrete example. There is a factory in Sunderland that sends 70% of its cars to mainland Europe, to other EU countries. Now, if there's a tariff barrier between us and where we send the majority of our cars, if there's differences in regulation between us and where we send the majority of our cars, if you are Nissan, you have a choice. Keep your factory here, 70% of your cars are going to face an extra cost. Put your factory in Frankfurt, oh, no. only 30% of your cars are going to face an extra so cost. Friendly. Where would you put that factory? And what happens to those 35,000 jobs across the North East? I was contacted um, the other day, and I'm sure it's still there, um, online and also on my social media by from somebody, um, a gentleman, who would contacted me publicly to say how um, the, the fear of no deal that he was feeling was really damaging his mental health. Mm -hmm. He then went on to explain to me when I asked him what he meant, he fears that we're going to have uh, a risk of famine in this country. <laughs> and he genuinely, genuinely believed that. And the situation that we're in now, and um, I do, I find it deeply frustrating, is that we are um, in, a, in a negotiation. The fact that um, Boris Johnson has had his hand tied, hands tied by removing no deal is beyond backward in my mind. I cannot, no matter how much people try and explain it to me, I cannot ever and will not ever share the rationale of removing no deal from the table. When I see this document, I actually think it is vaguely sensible um, in some of its contents. Its specific reason is to consider as a contingency plan what may happen. And as Nick said, I may leave this studio and get hit by a car. Mm -hmm. I don't mean I'm going to sit forever in this studio. Okay. It means I'll take yeah. my chances okay. and look both ways when I leave. You, you, you have all suggested that the civil service should be discredited. Andrew, you said mm. they're, they're pro-Remain. They are. If we discredit the civil service, who, by the way, are the people paid to advise government mm. of whichever party mm. on reasonable outcomes, mm. what do you accept as the potential outcome of a no deal? And, and Michelle, just to, to talk about you saying no deal should be on the table, Parliament, for two years, accepted no deal being on the table as a negotiating strategy. It's only when we have a month to go, just over right. a month to go until the Brexit date and no deal, what? that Parliament is taking that, action to prevent a no deal Brexit. That's not How right. is that? Because not Mrs. May, a Mrs. Thing May, to we do. now know in all those negotiations while she was Prime Minister, never ever raised the spectre of no deal in her that's negotiations right. with let's, Michelle Barley. She never played the best ace in the pack. Parliament really, really, did nothing to stop her halfway. putting let's, no deal on the table. Negotiations, the crucial point of a negotiation is when you're approaching the deadline. I understand so no matter, how negotiations of work. Of course, yeah. this, so yeah. you, this, this to remove is, it now is ridiculous. Let's be really clear on this. What does a no-deal actually do? It makes trade with our 27 closest markets more expensive. From the EU's perspective, it's trade with one of their closest markets, which becomes more expensive. So mathematically, no-deal hurts us more than it hurts the EU. So the idea that we have leverage by doing something that hurts us more, never going to work. Now, the idea that it's project fear, I'm, I'm going to take both of you up on, on things that you said in 2016. Mm -hmm. You tweeted um, on, uh, what is it, the, on 22nd of February, Hate scaremongering, re, re being safer in the EU, re uh, terrorism, intelligence. Surely any country um, would share this information regardless of a political union. Whereas a no deal Brexit means we're no longer in the EU system regarding data protection, which is why they can't so share that I, information with I us. I stand by, and it's, you really need to get out more if you've got nothing better to do than go back through to <laughs> all of my tweets. And I hope you found some riveting stuff in there, more interesting than that tweet. But I stand by that point. I do not believe that in a situation, for example, when Spain has um, a, a, a vision of a terrorist that may be coming into England and may be wanting to do some terrorist attack, I do not believe that they will sit there and say, oh, Cat no, one it, England, it, 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 Cat it, it, one England, that not, all it, those it, kids are going to be bombed not, in Manchester because we're not in a political union. It's, 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 it's not how Michelle. Yeah. 
Go That's for not it. how intelligence sharing works. You don't wait until the point where you have a silver bullet. You share intelligence gradually over the course of time. The there United is a Kingdom. reason why across Europe, after the Second World the, War, we recognise the need to pull our resources to prevent war and to share intelligence the gradually UK. every day. The mechanisms of European intelligence sharing, which, by the way, I've studied the at length, UK, are yes. complicated UN? and well, they well, work. Well, well, hang, hang on, guys. The UK is part of the Five Eyes, along yeah. with Australia and Canada. That is the biggest intelligence gathering, biggest monitoring in the entire world. Ye EU, and I am absolutely convinced the UK will continue to share. It, that is far more a one-way street. The EU need the intelligence that the UK get from the yeah. US. The idea you think that's going to cease is like there yellow hammer well, for the birds. And, and just one, the birds. One, one final thing with Andrew. One final thing with Andrew. You said an, uh, another remain lie exposed. German CBI says there will be no hikes in trade barriers if we if we leave. Vote leave. Well, we said vote keep actually, but yeah. Um, that is a no deal. A no deal forces the EU to put tariffs on UK products and as I just mentioned a lot of the stuff we make goes there. So again the Brexit that you said people voting for in 2016 is not yeah. no deal. You tell me that Britain's got a lot to fear from, the, from, from no deal. You go over to Ireland and talk to them about the prospect of no deal. It's up to the EU. They had plenty of chances to give us a decent deal and they didn't. Yeah. And, as, and as Michelle said we're sending our Prime Minister into the debating chamber with his hands tied behind his back. And a certain Prime Minister who said that was John Major in the 1997 general election and I was there when he said it.